I want to say good morning. Good morning and happy Sabbath to everybody. I pray y'all are doing well as we off top give the most high Yahuwah all the honor, the glory, all praise and worship. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for your son, Yahshua. Okay, y'all. Like I said, I pray everybody's doing well. There's something I need to do on here that I've done often but haven't done in a while. And I want to talk about the difference between Paul's letters versus the Holy Scriptures. And this stuff, when I'm, let me say it like this, this may be new to a lot of people on my page because I'm going to tell you why so much confusion between Christianity and Israel or the Hebrew because of the word, not, I'm not calling the, the word of Yah confusing. I'm talking about the different interpretations, the different beliefs. Paul said, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. But here it is. We got a lot of, you see what I'm saying? We got a lot of religion out here. We got a lot of traditions of men. You got teachers like the old, the, the law is over and done with its grace and mercy. You got teachers of the Trinity. You got teachers of uh, so many different things. And that's why in Christianity, how many times do y'all hear me say this, that if you teach the old covenant, versus the New Testament. You're going to always get confusion between Christianity and the Hebrew. A lot of those Hebrew Israelite brothers out there on them corners, they know what they're talking about. They are very knowledgeable. But some of them, I didn't say all, but some of them approach is so thrown off that it runs people away instead of drawing people in because of the hollering and screaming and some of them are very disrespectful, but others are not so much as disrespectful as the others. So let's break this down. Some people do not like the word testament because testament also has more than one meaning. That's confusion to a lot of people. The real Hebrews do not like to use the word testament. They love the word covenant. When you look at the old covenant, that is Yah's covenant with Israel. Another word you hear people use is agreement. Old Testament, old covenant, old agreement. New Testament, new, new covenant, new agreement. That confuses people. The Bible was wrote in, in Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic. So what no such thing as English being wrote back then, okay? Or we can say the Toro. A lot of Christians don't like the Toro. So I'm getting you to my point. Yahshua dealt with the Holy Scriptures. Paul dealt with letters. He may have quoted back some things to the Old Testament, just like when he went back to Adam behind one man, the whole world seeing behind one man as he was talking about Adam. But the Holy Word, whoo, teach all the spirit. The scriptures was already wrote. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, Yahuwah, and the Word was Yahuwah. And then the Bible says also that the Word became flesh. Who became flesh? Yahshua. Who was the Word? Who was the bread? So when you hear people saying, Oh, the law is over and done with. We don't, we don't, we don't supposed to keep the law. That is a lie. Yahshua never broke the law. But our heavenly father have already loaded, he, he laid out the word. In Paul's letters, Paul would give opinions at times, just like on marriage. He said, if it was up to me. I would tell those who are single to remain single as I am, if that was up to me. That's your opinion. But he said it's better to marry than to burn because he wrote letters to the churches. He wrote letters to help people in those churches solve their church issues. The word was already wrote. 
the word is not up for opinions. Who teach Holy Spirit? That's what's wrong with a lot of Christianity. They love to give their opinions. Now, all you got to do is get scripture. The word is not up for opinions, not how you feel. Paul didn't speak for Jesus, Yahshua. Paul talked to Gentiles. See, real Hebrews, once again, they love the Torah because Torah means teaching. Torah also means uh, to instruct, instructions. That's why I love teaching pastors. <laughs> but we have in Christianity a lot of hooping and hollering pastors. What good is you talking about the word and you can't expound on the word? You don't see Hebrew pastors hooping and hollering a lot of times. Music behind them. They deal straight with the word and to expound. And I'm not, I'm not saying this to make nobody feel some type of way. You're going to feel some type of way anyway. It's not my intention. I'm here to separate this. Paul wrote letters. Some may say the epistles. That's why you never seen our Savior talk about certain things. As Paul did. He said, I only came to the loss of Israel. That's what Yahshua said. Paul went to the Gentiles. So in his letters, there was a whole lot of things going wrong. And just like people fighting over the law. And Paul was from the tribe of Benjamin. But remember who Paul was before he was converted over. He was Saul. He was a Pharisee. But he also was from the tribe of Benjamin. He set up on the Gamaliel. A Gamiel, how you say, say the guy's name? Gamiel. A Gamiel. And that's why, can you imagine how many people, even some of the disciples, the apostles, having a hard time accepting Paul's teaching? That's why Peter didn't really, he didn't really refer to Paul as an apostle. He called Paul brother. Somebody better catch this. They had disagreements. Because of a lot of things that Paul taught. There was disagreements. There was rebuking going on. And I'm not saying that to discredit Paul. And that's why when I talk about this so-called pre-trib secret escape way out of rapture, Yahshua didn't teach no rapture. That's, see, the Catholic, and, and when I told y'all to do y'all homework with, with that Scottish girl, Margaret MacDonald, and, and the Darby, and that dream that she had, and what they added into the word, that was not taught from Yahshua. Yahshua dealt with the Holy Scriptures, not letters. And if you really catch the original meaning of the words that Paul was using, he was not talking about no, no flying away. But me, most people are going to disagree with me with that, and that's fine. That's why you got post-trip, pre-trip, mid-trip. And in Corinthians, Paul talked about a third heaven. But if you catch what he was saying, I knew a man, what was it, 14 years ago. In the body, uh, I was in the body or out of the body, I don't know. I can't even explain it. That's what he said. That's letters. Yahshua was not unclear on nothing that he taught. Who teach all the spirit? The word is the word. The Holy Scriptures is the, is the true word. But letters have opinions in them. Letters have different teachings in them. JT, are you saying we should not read? No, it's not what I'm saying. I'm saying learn the difference. Toro instructs. See, Christianity, Christians love the New Testament. This is why so many pastors have told people for so many years, don't worry about the old covenant. What a huge mistake. Because now you 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 messing up my culture. You messing up who I am. You messing up the law. You messing up a whole lot of things. You messing up the original showing up teachings when you don't study the old covenant. But Christians love the New Testament. That's why you have more hooping and hollering preachers. They love music behind them with the dynamics of music and the organ player versus listen at this man over here who's teaching the old covenant. 
let me let me tell you how you're supposed to look at a pastor being chose. <laughs> I'm not trying to make this video too much longer, but some of y'all are gonna be mad at me. See, most pastors I know look at the New Testament and they will vote a pastor in. And most of them will vote a pastor in according to what? If they like him or not. Can he sing? Can he teach? Can he hoop and holler? That's my homeboy. So the, they get the board together and they vote in a pastor. But that's not the way the Bible shows us. The Holy Spirit shows us he sends the pastor. Mm-mm, uh-oh. Uh-oh. If the pastor is not sent by the Holy Spirit, you done messed it up. And that's why so many churches are out of order because Satan has sent a lot of pastors to these churches. Well, let me back up what I'm saying. Go back to Jeremiah. Notice I'm going back to the Old Covenant. Go back to Jeremiah chapter 3 and get around verse, t, uh, verse 15. What did he say? I will give, not you, not the deacon board, come on, not the trustees and the deacons and the mothers of the church. He said, I will give you pastors according to mine heart. Woo! We shall what? Feed you, hooping and hollering. They're going to feed you knowledge and understanding. Not begging and being entertaining. Not feeding your emotions, but feeding your soul. Come on, y'all. Read Jeremiah 3 and 15. This was put in play before the New Testament, if that's what you want to call it. I give you pastors according to my heart. If that pastor don't have the Holy Spirit and teaching them what they want, doing what they want, they are not sent from the Holy Spirit. That's why most of them sing. I ain't saying all pastors, y'all. So when you when you take away the old covenant, you're missing all of this. Some of the things Paul wrote, Peter said, it's 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 hard to understand Brother Paul's writing. Well, I say Peter didn't even acknowledge him as an apostle. I'm not saying he wasn't. Because the Bible, the, 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 the letters say that Paul was chosen by Yah. But remind you, the word was already rolled before Paul got here. He wasn't rolled after Paul got here. I'm talking about the old covenant. That's why a lot of Christians, once again, would never accept the Old Testament. Let me tell y'all why I'm like this. Because when I was young, I was so lost on the word. And pretty much every church I went to, they never covered the Old Covenant. And that's why when you learn the Old Covenant, when you learn the Torah, when you learn the Apocrypha, you're going to have a totally, totally different set of teaching, y'all. See, it's hard to line up Hebrew <laughs> teachings with Christianity. It's going to always be a conflict because Yahshua did not teach Christianity. I hope somebody catch this. He dealt with Holy Scripture. What did Christ do? Quote Isaiah. Stuck with Isaiah. Referred you back to what was already wrote. And that's why it's a question. Well, why if he's so holy? Why if he's the Savior? Why if he's all that? Where is his writings at? That's the ongoing debate. Where is the writings of Yahshua? <laughs> really, when you look at it, they... They argued that he had writings, but they was they was removed. <laughs> but when you look at it, did he even have to write? Because he was already the word. He was already the covenant. He became flesh. Holy Spirit wrote it all already. He had wrote it out from the get-go. I hear what you're saying, Jay, but I, I still, man, I, I don't agree with this, man, the laws and he, man, we, we, we live by grace and mercy. Let me tell you something. Get your Bible. Let's not, let's not look at what Paul said on this. 
Let's look at what Yahshua said on this. Matthew 5, go to verse 17 to 18, because I say this scripture a lot on here. I say these scriptures a lot. Just said it yesterday. Matthew 5, 7 and 18. He said, think not. Notice he said, think not. That I am come to destroy the law of the prophets. But I came, what? To fulfill them. He didn't go against. He didn't destroy it. He fulfilled it. Destroying and fulfilling means two totally different things. Different thing. He said, I came to fulfill it. I, I didn't come to destroy it. And then verse 18, he turns right around and tell you, for verily, verily, I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. Till all be fulfilled. All be fulfilled. So when you hear people saying the law is over and done away with, Yahshua did not say that. He fulfilled it. That's why I said when you see these so-called prophets nowadays talking about they got a new word, a new revelation, run away from them. Don't listen to him. Paul was not a prophet. Once again, Paul stuck with the letters that he wrote. Galatians. Corinthians. Let me come back and write a second Corinthians. Thessalonians. Let me write a second Thessalonians. He would always come back and write. And then you can, you can see the frustration and the anger in Paul's letters all the time. Who tricks you? Who what's they wear be who who behooved you? How they wear it go? I've already taught you these things. Because there were so many false prophets. It was so much false teachings. They would come behind Paul's teachings and, and re say what some and they would say things in a different way than he said it to make him look like he was a liar. That's why he stayed frustrated. But I would never say that Paul was a fake apostle. I heard people say that. I would never say that because he still he still made mention of the Christ. See, Paul didn't walk with Christ. Yahshua. So recognize when you read and understand the, less, the letters versus what was already wrote. That's why so many people would never understand what they read, especially the New Testament, because you're trying to understand the new without understanding the old. True Hebrews don't even, they don't even say New Testament. They'll tell you ain't no such thing as the New Testament. Old covenant. And then y'all say, I'm going to make a new covenant. A new covenant with who? With Christianity. He didn't say that. See, that's putting words in the Savior's mouth. Israel. It was always about Israel. That's why I've been doing these little series y'all been catching. It. That's why I said Israel was never replaced by what they called in the, the church. That's a Christianity teaching. That didn't come out of the mouth of Yahshua. Holy Spirit say, that's my chosen will always be. I will not break my covenant. Turn back to me. That's what he said. Turn back to me. Come back to me. He didn't say I'm going to replace you in it all the way. No. That's a Christianity teaching. The rapture, that's a Christianity teaching. The trinity, that's a Christianity teaching. That's why there's so much confusion behind Oh, man, do you believe in the Trinity? You're going to get an ongoing argument from people. You got to realize what's a Christianity teaching versus what's a true Hebrew Israelite teaching of the Old Covenant, the Torah, the Pentateuch. Once again, Torah means to instruct. It means to teach. And if you go past the old and call yourself a pastor, you better go back to Jeremiah 3 and 15 again. Holy Spirit, I gave you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you, feed you, teach you, God, feed you with knowledge and understanding. That's why when I came out of Christianity, and first of all, studied to show myself approval, Holy Spirit showed me it wasn't about the teachings of Christianity. And I mean it out of love with no disrespect. Every Christian on my page, I pray that you understand what I'm saying right here. I'm not, I'm not down to you. I used to be in it. I used to 
I used to look at Christianity teaching and didn't care nothing for the Old Testament. That was me because that what I, that's what I was brainwashed with when I was little, when I was coming up. No, nobody could answer my questions back then. And then when I got to Jeremiah three fifteen, or when I went to Deuteronomy twenty eight and learned who and what we are, who and what Yahshua, Yah, Holy Spirit, Yah is not a man of staffs. Holy Spirit is the Bible say for God is spirit. John 4 and 24, I believe. But those of us that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I wasn't doing it at first. I wasn't getting sound doctorate. I got entertaining. I got I got performing. I wasn't getting instructions. I wasn't getting taught. And then when I started digging out that information for my own, I got taught opinions. I watched the, 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 the pastors clown around with the organ player, making people shout, and they weren't talking about nothing half of the time. Hebrew teaching is not like that. That's why when you get into the other books, not the laws books, because they're not laws, they will tell you so many different things versus what we was brought up in. That's why I'm going to give y'all, for those that know their homework as I close, that do your homework, you're going to catch this, what I'm saying. What book? that's not in the King James Bible, tells you there should be no music playing while a pastor is delivering the word. And now I'm talking about a pastor, a, John, a Jeremiah 315 pastor, who was, who was gave according to the Most High, sent by the Most High, that's feeding you with knowledge. See, when you're getting fed knowledge and understanding, it shouldn't be no music behind that. That should be all ears to the word but nowadays and it's been going on for years and years and years and years they put the music more over the word and that's why you got more singing pastors versus teaching pastors not jeremiah 3 and 15 pastors and i'm not saying this to damn no pastor but i might be talking about your pastor if he was not put in place by the holy spirit jeremiah 3 and 15 you better realize what you're dealing with See, everybody don't supposed to be in the pulpit. Y'all sure, once again, kept every bit of the law. Y'all sure dealt with the Holy Scriptures. You notice, do, do you just, when, when Isaiah, the prophets, oh, man, check this out. Mm, this is so powerful. Because this is why I love the Old Testament. Y'all had already gave the word. You look at the you look at the apostles. Let, let me say it like this. Look at the old prophets. They gave warnings. Because this is this is how you know how important the prophets, I mean, yeah, the old prophets was minor and major. And when I say minor, they don't take nothing away from them saying they was less than the major prophets. They just didn't write as much as the major prophets. That's all I mean by that. But you look at Isaiah, you look at you look at you look at all these old prophets. The word they gave the warning, and you look at that. Yah would not do nothing before he revealed it to them first. Look at Isaiah, go warn them. When you look at Israel and Judah, there was many warnings before destruction came. So he gave it to the prophets. You saw the apostles. You saw the kings back in the day. So when you talk about New Covenant, New Testament, why is it when you read the New Testament, you got to refer back to the Old Testament? I don't know how you try to teach the New Testament without the Old Testament. That's a confusion, a confusing teaching if I've never seen in my life. Because you're missing out on so much information. That's why right now, a lot of people don't know why we are in the shape we in now, why we are where we at and what's to come. Because you cannot understand what's coming if you don't understand what has already happened and what was already prophesied to happen, to come and play. That's why Christianity teaches, oh, he can come any day now. He can split that eastern sky. He can, you, you, have, you have messed up. That's why you've been hearing, oh, Christ is coming back soon. How long is soon? 
when people say that to me a lot of times, they are ignorant of the scripture. And I just mean simply not knowing when I use the word ignorant. They are ignorant because you got to realize what the Bible say got to happen first. Yahshua is not going to come back before the Antichrist. No, they don't, it don't work that way. The Antichrist have to, everything have to be done. Put it, It's already put in place. But everything has to happen before the return. That's why he said it, it would be just like Noah's day before he, before he would return. <laughs> now, that's another thing. So that means I got to go back and read what happened in Noah's day. Yahshua already knew what happened. He told us what to look out for. That's why the deceivement is so heavy also, because too many people are jumping past the old covenant. And I'm not saying this once again to call Paul a fake apostle and to discredit his teachers. No, I'm just trying to get you to understand there is a huge difference in between writing letters versus what was already wrote in sound scripture, sound doctrine, holy scriptures. That's why I, I say we didn't have to write. When JT, he wrote in the ground one time, everything was already wrote. And Yahshua showed you, I'm just quoting the old scripture, not letters. Once again, if you don't understand the difference, when you look at the old covenant, you see more laws, consequences. You was dealt with. You don't see a lot of grace and mercy. You see laws, consequences. But then in the new covenant, you see more of grace and mercy. More of that. More love. That's why Yahshua said love cover, covers a multitude of sin. But don't forget what was already wrote or taught in the old covenant. That's the foundation. That's why I said they... The disciples, they knew who Paul was when he was Saul. Remember, this man was a persecutor of the Christians. So once he was converted over from Saul to Paul, he had love. He showed love. He was very bold. He was very zealous. But he never stopped being bold. He just, he just changed who he was doing it for. The ones he persecuted. He started embracing. He started loving. But Paul had a bunch of hard times in that New Testament with them letters. If you can just read it and catch it, it wasn't pretty. So on that note, Toro, teach, instruct. You're going to always, that's why I want to tell y'all, you're going to always have a difference between Christianity and Hebrew teachings. And when you talk like how I'm talking, Many people that's Christians think you hate Christians. They think you hate Christianity. They think you are portraying hate, but they won't study for themselves. I challenge you. I challenge you to really go test what I'm saying. And look at our only unique begotten Savior, Yahshua. And look at really what he taught. Because if he told us he didn't go against the Sabbath, this would make people mad. Christians going to always say, well, Sabbath is Sunday. The Hebrew know there wasn't no such thing as Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Because all of these are names of gods, pagan gods. Monday, God. Tuesday, God. Wednesday, God. Thursday, Thursday. Friday, Saturday, Saturday, Sun worship, Sunday. Those were names of God. They didn't deal with the names, days of, 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 of the week like that and, and this fake calendar we got. They had Yah's time clock. That's a whole nother teaching. So that's why you got to understand the old covenant. That's why Christians try to live by Christianity. And that's why the Hebrew would never go against the law. The law shows you perfectly that it was nothing wrong with the law. It was something wrong with us. I always have been. We needed that order put in place. And we still abide by that order. We still live it the best way we can. Are you perfect? No. But you ain't going to walk around saying the law is over and done with. 
and I yield on that. Y'all have a wonderful, blessed Sabbath. Take care and remain blessed. Love you.